Before he married Anne Boleyn, King Henry VIII had an affair with her sister Mary, and it would ultimately help send Anne to the executioner. The story of Mary and Anne Boleyn has inspired dozens of books, plays, movies, and TV shows over the last 500 years, but their legend had humble beginnings. Most sources indicate that the Boleyn family made their way from France to England in the Middle Ages, with one subset of the family settling in 13th century Norfolk. By the time Thomas Boleyn was born in 1477, the family had become wealthy. Besides receiving a high-class education, he also got in good with the king, Henry VII, who gave Thomas prominent positions at court and status that carried through to the reign of Henry VIII. Thomas eventually became an ambassador, serving in the court of Margaret of Austria, who had key connections through her father, Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian. Under Thomas, the Bolins grew ever greater in power, wealth, and education, a state of affairs that benefited not only his son George, but his daughters Mary and Anne as well. Mary has traditionally been accepted as the elder sister, being born around 1499 or 1500. Sources typically put Anne's birth shortly after, around 1501. Mary and Anne Boleyn had a unique advantage for the time, thanks to their family wealth and connections. They learned far more about the world than the average Tudor peasant girl. Mary and Anne would have begun their learning at Hever Castle, the family's estate in Kent. There, they would have tackled basics like mathematics and reading, while also working on skills required for ambitious noblewomen, like learning to play a musical instrument, taking up needlework, and learning all about the complicated ins and outs of court etiquette. Historians have since often painted a picture of Anne being shrewdly intelligent and energetic compared to a less bright Mary. However, much of that is speculation, though it's clear that contemporaries regarded Anne as having a sharp mind. She's very precocious. She's an independent thinker, quite bookish, with opinions of her own, and she's not afraid to express them. By the time both Mary and Anne were teenagers, it was time for the next phase of their education. Anne set out for Margaret of Austria's court in the Netherlands in May 1513. A year later, Mary gained a spot in the entourage of Mary Tudor, Henry VIII's younger sister, who was on her way to marry France's Louis XII. The French king died less than a year into the marriage, so Mary Tudor soon traveled back to England to marry the Duke of Suffolk. However, Mary Boleyn stuck around at the court of the new king, Francis I. Not even two years after joining Margaret of Austria's court, Anne traveled to France. Both sisters were there at the time of Louis XII's death in 1515 and stayed on to attend the new queen, Claude. Mary returned to England in 1519 and wed William Carey. Anne lingered a while longer, staying at Francis's court until about 1521 before returning home and joining the retinue of Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife. At this point, Anne was reportedly set to marry Lord Henry Percy but the secret engagement between the two meant they hadn't sought out royal permission, which angered King Henry. He put an end to the match by a Cardinal Thomas Wolsey. Both Boleyn sisters dealt with nasty rumors about their reputations. For Mary, the trouble seems to have started during her time at the French court. Rumor had it that she was a mistress of Francis I, who was a renowned Lothario. However, there's little clear proof that the two made such a personal connection, even though Francis left a trail of evidence behind for many of his other hookups. Nonetheless, historian Alison Weir told NPR that it's still possible an affair briefly happened. Anne's reputation proved to be even more spotted, with claims that she schemed her way into Henry VIII's affections, though there's good evidence that she did no such thing. Henry had been quietly looking for a way to get out of his marriage well before Anne joined his court, and when he did set his sights on Anne in 1526, she appears to have left his court in an attempt to stave off the king's affections. But by then, he had already developed a taste for the Boleyns. Not long after returning from France in 1519, Mary Boleyn married courtier William Carey in February 1520 and became an attendant to Catherine of Aragon. It was here that Henry VIII almost certainly set his eyes on her. Henry had already developed a reputation, having acknowledged a son born out of wedlock in 1519. Because of the boy's illegitimacy, however, he was out of the line of succession, so Henry was still anxiously trying to produce a legitimate male heir. Mary and William, meanwhile, enjoyed a good position at court, palling around with the royals in a way that implied they were members of the king's inner social circle. William was clearly a key figure at court who earned Henry's respect. He was given fine horses out of a group meant for the king, as well as cushy appointments, promotions and rank, and rooms close to the king's. Though it isn't clear exactly when Mary Boleyn became the mistress of Henry VIII, 
the evidence for such a relationship is difficult to ignore. Mary and Henry appear to have connected in the early 1520s when the king gave rather generous gifts to Mary and her new husband William as well as Mary's father Thomas Boleyn. In 1524, Mary gave birth to her daughter Catherine, followed by son Henry in 1526. Some have since speculated that the children's father was Henry VIII. He, however, never acknowledged them as his children, and historians now believe that, by Henry Carey's birth, Mary's time as royal mistress was over. At this point, Anne Boleyn had already been part of the court for years and was recognized for her charisma and intelligence. By 1526, Henry was sending besotted love letters to Anne and inquiring how he might leave Catherine of Aragon, who had never managed to produce a living male heir for the king. While the prevailing narrative has been that Anne Boleyn left court because she was holding out for Henry to make her queen, she may have actually been hoping to marry someone else. It's also possible that Anne knew all about the affair between Mary and Henry and didn't like what she saw. We can't be sure, but there is evidence that she refused to do anything with the king until he assured her that she would be his only mistress. However, it's unlikely Anne expected him to break key diplomatic relationships to annul his marriage to Catherine. Despite her initial reluctance, Henry wore Anne down. By 1527, he sent a dispensation to the Pope which would not only have cleared the king to marry a relative of a former mistress, but would have also given him the go-ahead to marry a woman with whom he'd already shared premarital relations. This hints that they may have already begun a physical relationship. On June 22, 1528, Mary's husband, William Carey, died of the sweating sickness a deadly disease that occasionally swept through England and the rest of Europe between 1485 and 1551. Anne Boleyn also contracted the illness in 1528, though she survived to the relief of a rather disease-phobic Henry VIII, who sent one of his own doctors to treat her. Mary Boleyn was left a widow with two young children. At this point, the trail of Mary Boleyn grows hard to follow. She appears to have gone back to the family seat at Hever Castle, supported in part by a royal pension. As a former mistress of the king, Mary may have been a destabilizing figure for Anne, who was in an awkward and unsteady position as a favorite of the king, but neither queen nor mistress. That would soon change. Pope Clement VII told the king that he couldn't remarry, at least not if he didn't want to be excommunicated. By 1531, already defying the pope, Henry had removed Catherine of Aragon from court. In January 1533, he married Anne, though technically, the annulment of his first marriage didn't become official until May 1533. By 1534, it didn't matter, as Henry had been excommunicated and then deemed himself supreme head of the Church of England. Shocking as Anne Boleyn's marriage to Henry VIII was, Mary Boleyn soon had her own surprising news. In 1534, she got married again to a common soldier named William Stafford, only revealing it when she showed up to court pregnant. About Stafford, she later boldly wrote to statesman Thomas Cromwell, I had rather beg my bread with him than to be the greatest queen in Christendom. Anne banished her sister from court. Mary's marriage to a nobody threatened to call the whole family's reputation into question, and Anne's marriage had already put a target on the Boleyns. And you! Tell my sister she will never come to court again. I don't know her. She's no longer a Boleyn. It's not clear where the two newlyweds went, Though they likely made for Calais, France, where Stafford was stationed, some sources indicate that they had two children, Edward, who died as a young child, and Anne, whose fate is unknown. Before the whole affair of Mary's surprise marriage to William Stafford, Anne had established a pattern of helping out her sister. After Mary's first husband died, Anne, who was not yet queen, took on her nephew Henry Carey as a ward and employed a well-regarded tutor for his education. After William Carey's death, she also helped to secure Mary's widow's pension to support her newly single sister. Thomas Boleyn, also incensed by Mary's second marriage, eventually softened towards his rebellious daughter and set aside money for her before his death in March 1539. I think Thomas Boleyn is having many sleepless nights. I think he is very uncertain about the future. But Mary's second marriage was nevertheless a breaking point that appeared to forever damage the relationship between the Boleyn sisters. There's no evidence that the two communicated in any way after Mary was ordered to leave court. The lurid drama of Anne's downfall happened while Mary and William Stafford were likely in exile in France, forgotten but at least insulated from the bloody events at Henry's court. Though Mary Boleyn can hardly be held responsible for her sister's downfall, 
She became an unwitting pawn in Anne's execution, despite not even being in the country at the time. How? That old dispensation to the Pope Henry VIII drafted in 1527 to try and get permission to marry Anne. Just three years into their marriage, by January 1536, Henry had seemingly begun to wonder if Anne would ever provide the male heir he required. At that point, they had a daughter, but Anne had miscarried a son. Whatever the case, he decided to do away with her, and since he had never received the dispensation from the Pope, he apparently used the fact that he had once had an affair with Mary as grounds for the dissolution of his marriage to Anne. This was shown in a letter dated May 19, 1536, by Holy Roman Emperor Charles V's ambassador, Eustace Chapuis, who wrote, Others tell me that the said archbishop had pronounced the marriage of the king and concubine invalid on account of the king having had connection with her sister. There is a very real sense for Anne here that everything is slipping away. Anne was executed on May 19, 1536. Three years later, Mary and her husband William finally made it back to England while accompanying Anne of Cleves on her way to become Henry VIII's fourth wife in late 1539. By then, Mary's father Thomas had also died, leaving her to inherit about half of the family's wealth. It was so legally tangled up, it took years for her to access it, and she never had a chance to enjoy it. On July 19, 1543, just four days after Mary finally came into possession of her inheritance, she died of unknown causes. While Mary passed out of this world in relative obscurity, her side of the family would eventually have the last laugh. Mary's daughter, Catherine Carey, served as a maid of honor to Anne of Cleves and Catherine Parr, Henry VIII's fourth and sixth wives. She was later appointed as the high-ranking lady of the bedchamber by her cousin, Anne's daughter, Queen Elizabeth I. Catherine Carey married courtier and politician Francis Knowles and had 16 children, and while Elizabeth never had an heir, Catherine's line prospered. One of her direct descendants was Queen Elizabeth II through her mother, Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, and another of Catherine's descendants was Princess Diana Spencer, meaning that the current heirs to the British throne are doubly descended from Mary Boleyn.